Wednesday, October 14th, and this is now on h and It's definitely going to present a challenge for everyone traveling. Last-minute changes to the state's pre-travel testing plan stirs up new questions. Uh, many, many details that, that have, to, uh, have to go right. As Hawaii prepares to welcome back visitors, the economy continues to bottom out. It comes about for a variety of reasons. New at noon, a status check of Australia's Great Barrier Reef, and the outlook is not good. We're still two weeks away from Halloween and people are already holiday shopping. I'm Chris Martinez. I'll tell you why the pandemic has millions searching for deals online right now. We're also seeing sales at Sam's Club and Best Buy and Bed Bath & Beyond. These stories, plus what made this Russian space launch today so historic, that's coming up on This Is Now. What's up, everyone? Thanks for watching This Is Now. Jonathan and Ashley here coming to you from the H&N Digital Center. Let's get right to today's top stories. Health officials are reporting 10 COVID-19 deaths today, but officials say seven of them happened between August and September, while the other three occurred this month. DOH is also reporting 101 new infections today. The county breakdown shows 81 are on Oahu, 18 on the Big Island, one on Maui, and one resident was diagnosed out of state. The state's pre-travel testing program starts tomorrow, and Governor Ige's latest emergency proclamation allows most inter-island travelers to participate. After seven months of empty hotels, leaders say it's time to take a chance to restart the economy. Here's Chelsea Davis with more. Each county has its own set of rules when it comes to inter-island travel and post-arrival testing. And that's because the governor says each island has its own challenges. This economic collapse, which, which is one that we have not hit the floor yet, we are in a state of free fall as we speak. State leaders say the tourism relaunch is a crucial step in reviving Hawaii's economy. But the plan is complex with rules that change from island to island. All out-of-state travelers will be required to provide a negative COVID test within 72 hours of travel if they want to skip the quarantine. After arriving in Hawaii, Hawaii County, where there are currently 249 active coronavirus cases, will be requiring a second negative test. Maui and Kauai will make those post-arrival tests voluntary. Oahu hopes to have the capacity to offer a post-arrival test by the end of the month. We do believe one test is better than no test and we know people are going to show up without any test and agree to quarantine for 14 days and then it becomes our kuleana for the Honolulu Police Department to enforce quarantine. And so we're working on a post-arrival test that would be done at the airport upon arrival. We're working on a, having a mobile lab out there that could do up to 10,000 tests a day. On average it would take three hours to get your result. It's a PCR test, the gold standard with very high level of accuracy. And if folks agree to this post-arrival test, and should the governor allow us to do it, then they wouldn't be subject to quarantine. Both visitors and returning residents who may go to Vegas for three days and not be able to get a test before they leave. They could come here and get a test and get out of quarantine. For inter-county travel, Hawaii County has opted out of the pre-travel testing and will keep the quarantine mandatory. Maui and Kauai will allow inter-county travelers to skip quarantine if they test negative before travel. And remember, neighbor island residents can still fly to Oahu free of restrictions. The state is also using $30 million in federal funding to buy new tests and and testing machines. This means we will have hundreds of thousands of additional tests that we can use to manage the virus in our community as we resume economic activity and school reopenings. Local leaders caution that the reopening of tourism will not be flawless. All the testing in the world, as much as we'd like to believe it, will not stop spread of COVID from one person to another. Even though you may not with these decisions that are being made. Be constructive in your criticism and support one another because the cynicism in this state is moving as fast as the virus and that's got to stop. This is an imperfect scenario being executed by imperfect people who have one thing in common, 
Aloha. For Hawaii. The state says it has 17 partners offering pre-travel COVID tests for step-by-step -step instructions on what to do if you're planning a trip, including where to get a test. Go to hawaiinewsnow.com. Chelsea Davis, Hawaii News Now. It's no secret the relaunch of tourism is necessary for economic growth and recovery. But it's even more critical when you consider the economy has taken an all-time hit. Here's Mark Carpenter with those details. In addition to being the executive director of UH's economic research organization, Carl Bonham sits on the House Select Committee on COVID-19. His latest data shows that in the second quarter, Hawaii experienced a 42% drop in GDP, which measures our economic growth. Not only is that among the worst in the nation, there's also no historical comparison. We're all the way back at a level of GDP from 2012, right? So we've essentially wiped out about eight years of economic growth. And you can't, in, in modern history, right, in, um, from the 1960s on, you don't have any drops that size. A record decline that underscores a need to reopen Hawaii for business. And as the state moves toward its pre-testing launch, you heroes forecasts show that it will take years for tourism numbers to recover even under the best of circumstances, meaning no shutdowns or surge in cases. Out in 2024, 2025, we're at about the same level of visitors as we had in maybe early 2017. And that, that comes about for a variety of reasons. Uh, some people will choose not to travel for a long period of time, even with the vaccine, even with treatment for the, for the disease, but also because of the economic damage that's been done globally. As Hawaii welcomes back tourists, Bonham doesn't anticipate a large initial influx, partly due to the state's delayed response on establishing testing protocol. It's kind of like what a restaurant calls a soft opening. You know, you might have might have preferred to do it complete and with all everything worked out, but it, that's not going to happen. And I, you know, ideally we get all the bugs worked out and all the details uh, between now and Thanksgiving. Certain businesses will remain closed during this time. Some have advanced their renovations schedule to move it up from 2022 to 2021 and fill this opportunity here. These are choices that each of these hotels and business enterprises are free to make. However, we are assured that there will be enough of an inventory to deal with the traffic that's anticipated between October 15th and the holiday season in year end. On top of a slow recovery for visitor travel, Bonham anticipates it could take until 2023 or 24 for unemployment numbers to drop below 5%. Mark Carpenter, Hawaii News Now. In China, after a dozen infected residents were found in a northern port city, officials are launching a mass testing campaign with plans to test some 9 million people in five days. Janice Mackey Freyer reports. Authorities here are testing the entire city of Qingdao. That's 9 million people, roughly the population of New York, and they claim they'll do it in just five days. The massive response comes as China has been returning to normal. During a holiday last week, major tourist sites like the Great Wall were packed. Hundreds of millions of people were encouraged to travel, to spend in order to boost the economy. For months, China has used strict quarantines and so-called wartime measures to contain outbreaks. In Qingdao, officials say the cases were confined to one hospital, lowering the risk of spread in the community, but they say they'll keep on testing. Janice Mackey Prayer, NBC News, Beijing. On Capitol Hill, Judge Amy Coney Barrett took her seat for a final day of questioning. More than halfway through her confirmation hearings, the Supreme Court nominee has declined to say how she would rule on key issues like the Affordable Care Act and abortion rights. Are all questions on which I can't give an answer. Again, it's one of those things that I can't answer. It's simply really not something I can opine on. This is the first time in American history that we've nominated a woman who's unashamedly pro-life and uh, embraces her faith without apology, and she's going to the court. Seat at the table is waiting on you. Hawaii Senator Maisie Hirono serves on the Senate Judiciary Committee and had the opportunity to ask Judge Barrett questions again today. In accepting your nomination, you describe Justice Scalia as your mentor. That's been mentioned many times before. It appears that you may be even more 
uh, to the right of Justice Scalia, whom you described as the staunchest conservative. I think it's important to look at what kind of impact you would have had on more recent Supreme Court decisions. When Justice Ginsburg served on the court, the Roberts Court issued numerous 5-4 to four partisan decisions. But what's notable are the more recent 5-4 to four decisions after Justice Kennedy, who was often in the middle of the ideological spectrum, was replaced by a much more conservative justice. The court shifted rightward as Chief Justice Roberts' conservative views was now in the middle of the ideological spectrum of the court. Let's get to some local business news now. Here's Howard Dykus. This week, airlines go from 17 to 29 city pairs between Hawaii and the mainland. That's 29 rising to 41 routes by November, 44 by Thanksgiving. But all that is contingent on no flight cancellations, and there frequently have been cancellations in the time of COVID. The Big Island's Royal Kona Resort will reopen tomorrow. The Royal Kona closed to guests in March, but has since undergone seven months of renovations, with some of the work done by hotel employees who otherwise would have been furloughed. The average 30-year mortgage rate fell a tick this week and now sits at precisely 3%. Mortgage applications were flat, but are still running 24% ahead of last year. The general election is just weeks away, and along with some exciting races, Oahu voters also have a chance to change the city's charter. The proposed amendments are wordy, but important. Allison Blair takes a closer look. The questions are on the back side of the ballot, a total of four. Three of them are partially inspired by the Kealoha scandal. When you're filling out your ballot, don't forget about the charter amendments on the back. The first question has to do with establishing term limits for the Honolulu prosecutor in the wake of the scandal in that office. Right now, the prosecutor can run as, as many times as, um, as he or she wants to, and this would impose uh, a two-term limit, just like the mayor. Next, voters will decide if the city should create a youth commission. This would give an opportunity for youth to participate um, in the policy process earlier, um, to give their advice on things that directly affect youth, you know, including um, issues around climate change. It would be made up of 15 members between the ages of 14 and 24 from across Oahu. It's unclear exactly how much money establishing the commission would cost. The final two questions are closely related and partly inspired by the Kealoha scandal. You need someone to police the politicians um, and this is one of the organizations that does that. Voting yes would give the commission that investigates and enforces the city's ethics rules more freedom. The commission's investigation of the Kealohas was disrupted by hiring and budget questions raised by city lawyers. Their budget will still be set by the city council, but they'll have a lot of flexibility in how to spend that budget and what employees to hire and what employees they need and, and how much to pay those employees. Allison Blair, Hawaii News Now. Thank you very much, Allison. I want to take us outside live. Check this out. Look at that down King Street. Beautiful day shaping up out there. We got Billy V in for Guy with the latest on our weather. Thank you very much. Let's get you your forecast. First of all, we'll talk about the waves one to three on the north and west shores. Uh, there's a swell due on Friday for the north shore, two to four over in the south and east facing shores. East facing shores, uh, though, as the trade winds go down, so will those waves there on that side. Let's go ahead and talk about the winds. Everybody's getting pretty much in single digits across the state. Nothing in Hilo, Kahului, Kaunakakai, and Lihue. But look at that. The winds have changed over here. They are now coming from the westerly direction. And and that's because of several things that we are watching out for. Cold front is approaching the islands. We've got an upper level low that's just uh, north of Maui County. And then we are watching some prefrontal moisture that's just off of Kauai and Niihau. This will start to affect uh, Kauai and Niihau coming up this afternoon. It'll affect Oahu coming up tomorrow. So let's get you, or we'll show you what the frontal system is going to do as it brings the moisture on down. And it's pulling up moisture also from the south. So we'll move you through tomorrow and Thursday, Friday. You can see the showers, possible thunderstorms impacting 
Kauai and Oahu. Now the models vary. It, they say it could stall over Kauai and Oahu and another model has it coming through the state. So we will watch that as we go through the next 24, 48 hours here at your severe weather station. Mostly sunny skies. Afternoon showers today with the exception of Kauai. You may get some rain showers a little bit later on. Southwesterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour and once again your 7 day forecast shows Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Make sure you have your umbrellas out. It's going to be pretty wet throughout most of the state. Always get the latest on air, online, on your mobile device and at hawaiinewsnow.com. Australia's Great Barrier Reef has lost 50% of its coral populations in the last three decades. According to researchers in Queensland, climate change is a key driver of reef disturbance. Coral reefs are some of the most vibrant marine ecosystems on the planet. Between a quarter and one third of all marine species rely on them at some point in their life cycle. The Great Barrier Reef is the world's largest coral reef. It covers nearly 130,000 square miles and it's home to more than 1,500 species of fish, 400 species of hard corals, and dozens of other species. New at noon, a Russian rocket blasts off for the International Space Station. It's carrying one American astronaut. This could be the last time, though, we see a mission quite like this. Richard Engel reports. Two, one. This could be the end of an era. Lift off. Early this morning, a Russian Soyuz rocket blasted off, carrying an American astronaut from a launch site in remote Kazakhstan. It's the last scheduled time the United States will pay Russia for a ride into space. The mission carries astronaut Kate Rubens and two Russian cosmonauts for a six-month rotation on the International Space Station, which has been in continual service for 20 years. It's one of the most incredible engineering achievements in human history. It's Rubens' second time traveling to the station. So I wanted to be an astronaut ever since I was a little kid. Also a virologist by training, Rubens will continue research he started in 2016 on bioengineering in space. But this flight is likely the end of a chapter in the long history of cooperation and competition with Russia. The Soviet Union won the first round of the space race, sending up the first man, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. The U.S. then saw and raised the bet with the moon landing. Got the flag up now and you can see the stars and stripes. But after the United States suspended the shuttle program in 2011, America has relied on Russian lift. And for big bucks, this seat cost $90 million. Now U.S. companies, Boeing and SpaceX, are expected to step in. After SpaceX's successful mission and splashdown in August. Splashdown. SpaceX is due to carry three American astronauts to the International Space Station in early or mid-November. Today is also Rubin's birthday. She plans to vote from space. Richard Engel, NBC News, London. Thank you, Richard. Let's see what else the internet is talking about today. Hey, if you weren't able to get your pre-order in for those PS5s, there's a fast food giant that wants to help you out. We're talking about Burger King. <laughs> They're gonna have a new contest. It starts tomorrow. Customers can get a scratch off game token when they qualify with this with that order, with a order. There are more than 1,000 winning console pieces up for grabs, but if you're not the lucky one that gets one of those, there's a lot of food up for grabs too. I'd be happy with that right now because my stomach is literally growling. I do not know if you heard that. I'll order the Burger King. You can keep the PS5. Okay, deal. Deal. Throwing right. that on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> and the 2020 Billboard Music Awards airs tonight right here on KHNL at 7 p.m. Hawaii time. The event will broadcast live from the Dolby Theater in L.A. Kelly Clarkson is hosting and will also open the show. I read she's going to perform, Jonathan, one of your favorite Whitney Houston songs. What have you been singing recently? I, now I get so emotional. <laughs> oh, man, I can't even think. I higher know love. Oh, take me to higher love. Bring me to higher love. Yeah. So she will be opening with that. And other artists set to perform include John Legend, Alicia Keys, and Post Malone. Now, Malone, Lil Nas X, Billie Eilish, and Khalid lead the pack of nominated artists. Garth Brooks is this year's recipient of the Icon Award. Kelly Clarkson killing it. I know. Kelly, all that's her new ventures, great. the new talk show. I really enjoy it. And she's an amazing voice. 
I can't wait to watch that either. Yeah. I think it, it's up right here on KHNL. That's so right. Cool. 7 p.m. Hawaii time. And Dunkin' Donuts is putting some heat in its product lineup with a spicy hot donut. Now, the new treat is called the Spicy Ghost Pepper Donut. Ooh. It's topped with a strawberry flavored icing featuring a blend of cayenne and ghost pepper and comes with a red sanding sugar for a sizzling look. Now it's on the menu in time for Halloween with a few weeks to spare and the spicy ghost pepper donut is available for a limited time at participating locations until December. Let's talk donuts for a second okay. because you have been hitting up this that new donut oh, shop yeah. in town. <laughs> So much. Way to out me, Jonathan. I know. Well, all you do is go to your Instagram and <laughs> posting about it. It it's looks delicious. What, what was it called? Holy Grail yeah. Donuts. They're from Kauai, but they just opened in Kaka'ako, and it's phenomenal. They had really interesting flavors. No ghost pepper. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. I would try ghost pepper. Really? Yeah. I, I, I like, like spicy. the sweet and spicy, but yeah. that might be a little much for me. All right. And with 72 days until Christmas, you guys, the holiday shopping season is already underway. And today is the second day of Amazon's big sale for Prime members and the pandemic also has other companies offering some de deep discounts. Here's Chris Martinez. This is what holiday shopping used to look like, but the pandemic has more people pointing and clicking. You know, way back in the day, holiday shopping started with Black Friday weekend. And as online sales have grown, retailers have started pushing those sales earlier and earlier and earlier. And this year they're going to start now. Samantha Gordon with Consumer Reports says the coronavirus is a big reason why. Amazon was overwhelmed with orders in the spring and summer when Americans shifted to even more online shopping as stores shut down. Amazon Prime Day is back. The company moved their annual two-day Prime Day from July to this week, offering more than one million sale items. Target, Walmart and others are following suit with online deals. We're also seeing sales at Sam's Club and Best Buy and Bed Bath and & Beyond and all of these major retailers are offering these different savings. And many people are ready to take advantage of the discounts. A survey from Retail Me Not found 75% of Americans prefer to do their holiday shopping online. 67% say they're searching for deals during the prime days. That's more than Cyber Monday and Black Friday. I think the trend of earlier shopping for the holidays is here to stay. Retail Me Not's Sarah Skirball says there are big price cuts on electronics, appliances, and home goods. A lot of people are going to start their shopping and in some cases finish their shopping in October. And that's because 55% of people are concerned about those inventory and shipping delays. She says there will be deeper discounts on toys in December, but shoppers who wait take a chance the toy will be sold out or won't arrive on time. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Amazon Prime has someone going to be a new Instapot <laughs> owner. Exciting stuff. I know. Finally got one. Yeah, you late to that game. <laughs> <laughs> and all great things are starting podcasts, you guys, including This Is Now and Foley, the sound maker monster. Now, Ooh. who's Foley? Well, she's a fuzzy purple monster and the newest Sesame Street character who, along with her sidekick, Mikey the Microphone, co-hosts oh. the Sesame Street podcast with Foley and Friends. Now, the educational kid-centered podcast is on Audible now with new 15-minute episodes released each Tuesday and Thursday starting October 20th. Foley and Friends is the iconic children's show's first podcast with episodes featuring original songs, games, jokes, lessons, and visits from beloved characters like Big Bird, Elmo, and Cookie Monster in yeah. every episode. That is adorable. Oh, I yeah. really like that. All sorts of podcasts coming out. I've been listening to a Crime Junkies mm -hmm. podcast. That's, I'm always into those, those are real my crime favorites. stories. And Mothership from Stephanie Lum. If you haven't heard it, <laughs> listen to it. There's a new episode that comes out tomorrow but she has several dozen already posted on our h and podcast page you can find it on our website as well along with the this is now as podcast we also post podcasts every day at 5 a.m and 4 p.m after first step four so you can get all the news headlines updates that's going to do it for this is now stay safe everyone